Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So, young Susanna from Vintage Blend Studio sent me a gorgeous piece of Christmas printed fabric. It's a panel with numerous images on it. Now I've been chopping up and dividing things up here. So I'll just show you all the bits if you haven't seen the panel yet. It's called Christmas Magic. So the challenge was to see what I could do with the angels or a angel um, on the panel. So I'll just show you the images and then you'll know exactly what you're looking for if you decide to pick one of these images and have a little play. Love that reindeer. And here's the dove. Love, love the dove. Just gorgeous. And then we have the angels. So three beautiful little girls with a little message on each one. This one here behind is the one that I keep being drawn to. I think it's because it's very similar to my Christmas tree colors. Now in amongst it, Susanna sent me some wing options. So she picked up this, uh, I think it was a quilt that had angel wings all over it, stitched onto it, which is what Susanna's used on one of her little girls. So she's doing the three of them and she's making a bunting. That's a gorgeous butterfly. And then some little wings. And I think Susanna used these, just some little wings. So all of Susanna's three have different wings now, I found this in the cupboard. I've had it for years. I would have picked it up at a um, craft fair or a craft shop. I would say I've had this probably for 15 years, kicking around in the cupboard. So I decided this is what I'm going to use. Plus, it gives me a little hook that I can put the Christmas tree fronds onto to hold it onto the Christmas tree. So at this stage, due to time commitments, I'm going to do the one angel and maybe I do another one next year and keep adding to my collection. So I plan to keep all of these goodies together in a satchel, pop it into my stash. But this year, I'm just going to work on the one little girl. Now, my plan is to make her as padded as, as I can and stitch all the layers together and at some stage insert the um, wire wings trim off this excess fabric now the layers i have got myself some um, this is this is like a wool batting i went for something a little bit more padded because i want to stitch into the angel and embellish her I've also got a piece of calico just for, you know, a little extra stability. And then I went hunting for some fabric to go on the back. And I found this. And it's really good. And it's neutral. So I did have picked out a red velvet that matched this. I just keep getting drawn to this, this red that's on the side here. But I've decided to leave that because I kept thinking about, okay, if I'm going to embellish, I'll be stitching around the perimeter of her and I'd probably match the colour of her little dress. For example, I grabbed out the Sue Spargo threads and I've got a few here, especially these two, that complement her little dress. And then I thought, well, if I've got red velvet on the back, it... I don't know, it looked like it was going to compete somewhat. So I've put the red velvet back in the cupboard and I'm going to keep it neutral on the back and then any stitching I do will just, you know, be in its entirety there looking gorgeous without competing with the fabric at the back. Now, I'm hoping that there's enough thickness there that I can slide my needle through and do some little stitches without peeking through. Yep, that's good. Because I'd like to put some beads on her and highlight these little 
little berries. So that's the plan. So the first thing, I think I should probably stabilize that. You know, the other thing too that I really didn't want to lose is her halo. I love it. I kept looking at it without that. And then the, and I thought, no, nah, of course I can add it in. I even like these little wings. So then I started thinking about, well, how do I cut this out so that all of those elements can remain? And I decided that I'm going to go a few mil away from her. And then I can stitch that perimeter and we will keep her in all her glory. If it doesn't look right, we can always go back in and cut it down a little bit more. But I don't know, I like, can you see how the designer has put a little yellow whimsical edge there. I really like that, really like it. So I'm going to attempt to cut all three layers out, leaving a little edge around her. Can, like I said, it can always trim it back off but I think it's gonna to add to her interest, her grandeur. If I was to go right on the edge of her, I think I'd lose too much of that, the beauty that I'm falling in love with on the design. So she's going to be whimsical, which is sort of keeping true to the design as well. And I'm just going to Nibble around, trying to keep it all together. You can always come back through and trim it back. But she's going to be rough edged, if that's the term. So I'm fussy cutting her out. I might just go wide here. Where's the bigger scissors? I'm getting a better cut now. I'll keep going on that curve. Have I got a dull spot? Oh, it's difficult when your tools aren't quite what you need them to be, isn't it? So she's going to be a dolly for my tree. The other thing I was thinking about is I'd like her to have some something at the bottom, either legs. I'm not totally convinced yet. I just need to go in there a fraction more, I think. Or some lace or so. Another little spot I've been thinking about. Yeah, that's good. I just couldn't, I've had this piece for a few, a week, uh, a couple weeks. I've lost track of time now, guys. And I, I just couldn't decide how I was going to treat her. I went through looking at doing a um, three-dimensional doll where I stitch her together and turn her right sides out and stuff her like a Tilda doll. And I just, I don't know, couldn't, couldn't decide. And then I thought, no, I'm going to make her a little bit flatter. I'll leave all that bulk on down there. Just in case I want to put some lace in. I've got something I can attach to. Now, I'm just going to... Sneak in there. And sneak up here. If I get time, I might do the others. But boy, I'm running out of <laughs> I'm running out of days before Christmas. So we'll see how we go. I don't want to rush any of them either. 
because otherwise I won't do as much embellishing as I know that I would like to do on them. There we go. I like the halo, that's still attached. Yeah, let's just trim that a bit. Like I'm not going to sweat the details, I'm just going to play it by ear and see what comes of it. Now let's have a look at how we get these wire wings in. Let's get some pins out, but we'll keep her secure down the bottom here. Now, where do we put the wings? Do we go in there? Do we go there? Do we just attach them to the back after the fact. Mm, I'm liking the idea of we don't go anywhere near the, all those layers. We do her and then we just stitch, stitch those on at the back and just catch it once she's finished, catch it there, there, and then if that's, that could even be bent up a little bit so the bristle of the Christmas tree could catch her there. I'm liking that idea. Okay, decision made. I was wondering how I was going to do that. Let's get a few pins around here to stabilize things. It's getting a little bit. It's falling apart on me. She's drifting apart. There we go. Oh, she's so cute. Beautiful piece of fabric. Now, I believe it came from Gail's Patchwork Emporium. The details are in the description below. But I know many of you commented when you first saw it on my video that you found it everywhere, on eBay, everywhere. So you shouldn't have too much trouble finding the panel. I think too, if I do the piece flat like this, when it gets to a reindeer or the dove or the wreath, I don't have that padded feel happening. Yeah, I like that. So what are we gonna do next? I think we do the overcast stitch around her. And we use maybe even something sparkly. Let's have a play. If we don't like it and it's too much, we can always go down to something a little less sparkly, but I like it. Let's have a bit of fun. Let's put a bit of sparkle on our girth. If I remember rightly, short is better with this product. Let's grab a needle. Threading up. Need a bigger eye. There we go. So, thinking I will. Where am I going to stitch? I'm just thinking. So it changes colours. So see how it's drifting between colours? So I need to be brave. Do I want sparkle right around the outside? Yeah, let's just do it. If I don't like it, I'll just take it out. I'm going to bury that little knot in the layers. like so, and just do a little overcast stitch. 
Let's do a little bit, see what it looks like. Like I wanna add beads and things to her. So we, I do wanna build the sparkle and this will certainly put me in the mood, this sparkly Sue Spargo ribbon. She's gotta hold her own on the Christmas tree. There's a lot of sparkle on the tree. So the little angel needs to handle herself. So this is just a whip stitch or overcast stitch. That'll secure all those layers. I could probably change my thread when I get around the halo and do a gold or I don't have to do the same thread all the way, do I? A yellow. Do I have a yellow? Yeah, I do. Whether that's the right thing to do, we'll see. There we go. That's looking good, guys. Ow. Nearly took, took a finger out. That little dove, too, has caught my eye. I don't know if I'll get time to do the dove, but maybe I do prep it as well. What the hang? I just love it. I love them all. Ah, oh, now my thread's come undone. All right. That's going to work a treat. I'm really happy with that primitive stitch around there. This dove. Okay, we're heading off on a tangent now. She's a definite. I will stitch around the exterior to secure all the layers. Then I will um, come back in the next video and work on embellishing. But what I want to do now, because you know how it is, the girl's heading off on a tangent. Where's the dove? Susanna, we're doing the dove. I just love it. Just, just love her. And I think I'll do a similar style. So I've got enough fabric here, yes. I've got enough for the wadding, yes. Okay, let's, let's trim her down. Mm. The little... The little twig in her mouth, the olive branch. Um, do we honour that or do we add it as a three-dimensional element, as in honour it as in, in the design, or do I add something to, like a twig? Yeah, that'd be a bit of fun. See, the reason I'm questioning it is the... Um, do we have the ability to cut around it without it sort of looking a bit odd or do we lose it and add it at three dimensionally oh, look seriously oh, so cack handed today let's just you know think about it a little bit girl all right one layer i want that same feeling of texture Let's get the next one. And there was calico in there as well. All right. Now, calico. Just glancing around my stash. I know there was some left. Let's get over here. There we go. I've always got this stuff lying around. Let's put that in there that in there beautiful now she feels substantial you could e go through and invisible stitch but i think the pins will do the trick and this one her little edge I'm thinking I might just do a plain cotton stitch. 
like just something like that because I don't want to take away from the design and it's a lot smaller and more detailed. So I think, I uh, so wanted to do a bird, look she's all puckered, a bird for Christmas. I've been, um, I had the Ann Woods bird pattern and I contacted Anne and said, look, I'm considering doing a Christmas little bird. Is your pattern okay if I do that? And she's like, yeah, no problems. And then um, a couple books had birds in them. So when this arrived, I was like, oh, a little bird. Just felt like I wanted a little dove on my tree or something. Yeah, it was definitely a dove. Remember, I was talking to Susanna months ago going, Christmas, we need a project for Christmas. That feels nice and secure. I wonder if I stitch it first because it's so detailed. This was nice, big sweeping cuts, but it was tricky in that little those little edges. I think I'm going to tack it down on the perimeter with little stitches. I don't know if this is really necessary, but I sort of feel like it's going to stabilize the bird a little. Because there's a lot of layers, like all this curved edge here. So I think just to hold her. I'm going to stay within the line. Oop, you won't see. You won't see um, the stitches because they're. You know, I should probably get that needle in in the layers there to start off. Yeah, because I will overcast stitch anyway. Oh. Just do a decent knot, girl. Still not decent. And don't be so heavy-handed and pulling it through, through the fabric. I'm excited, you see, and I've had a coffee. <laughs> so I can feel the energy. Oh, I just can't even tie a knot. That's better. So my homework will be to secure, I'll start at this wing. It's just on the inside of the Now my thread's come out. <sighs> Ho hum. The challenges of stitching. It's slow for a reason, isn't it? So I'm coming up and down in the one spot so that I don't get too many big daggy stitches in behind. I'm then scooting through the layers. See, even this one I might trim with a little bit of green around the outside I think I don't know I guess by stitching this perimeter is going to give me a moment to have a little think slow it down and have a think about the design what do I want do I want a little green border like I did with the angel that way I'm not chewing too deeply into the print of the little bird there's a big daggy stitch, not that it matters, it's the back. But let's let's try and be a little neater. Yep. Probably could have done this with her too. Would have really stabilized those edges, but I think it, it'll be fine. The the main concern with the little bird is it um it's so much smaller. 
and there's all this little detail here. So I just want to make sure that she doesn't wriggle too much. Gosh, she's so, so gorgeous. She'd be beautiful quilted with needle and thread. Like stitch in those feathers. Thank you, Susanna, for my Christmas gift. Give the girl fabric. Ow. Okay. Yeah, this is going to work a treat. Just got to remember to stay just inside the print. Having said that, I think I'm going to leave a border. Just a tiny little border of the green. I don't know. I can't decide. I'm still thinking. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I love it just sitting in this green background, but I don't want a square looking bird sitting on my Christmas tree. So I think I will still lose the background. There we go for time, plenty of time. Where am I? Oh, goodness me. All twisted up. There's threads coming off this. Which are complicating things. So what are you guys all up to? Are you stitching the Roxy um, Christmas, 12 Days of Christmas project? Some great ideas. The day I'm filming this, I still haven't committed to doing them yet. I, I just don't think I've got enough time. I would love to. But then there might be one that I spot and go, oh, I could do that for my tree. So at this stage, I'm just, just winging it. I'm not sure when this video is actually coming up. So for me, we've seen a couple. And I guess if you've seen a video of me playing with some of the prompts, well, then you know I'm boots and all in to some degree. I just can't see me doing all 12, but, you know, you never know. I might end up doing them later in December if I haven't already started. So you're probably wondering. Well, you probably know what I've already decided to do with them or not. <laughs> oh, dear. Very clever girls, those two. There we go. That's looking good. I like how she is quite thick and substantial. So if I want to bury my needle and thread into the layers without popping through the back, I can. Because there's plenty of chunkiness there to keep me in position of not you know, being too knotty at the back. It probably doesn't really matter, but it does to me. So, just working my way around. This will really help in cutting it out. All right. It's getting a nice quilted look. So I pulled it a little bit tight there. So just loosen that off, ease it off a little bit. Oh, 
not so pretty. Let me know if you guys are working on one of the designs, whether you're going to do an angel or the reindeer. I like the reindeer. The wreath is beautiful. Oh, what you could do with that wreath. Where is it? No, I'm not going to start the wreath, but <laughs> I just need to look at it. Let's have a little look. I'll look at the bird, the cardinal. I would do a similar thing. I would trim it, trim it back of excess fabric, make it three-dimensional. You would lose the words probably on the inside. I would cut them out, but they could also be then reattached. Yeah, that's what I'd do. I'd cut around each of those words and reposition them on the wreath so that they weren't gone. But it'd be beautiful. And the same thing, make it really padded so you got nice feel under your fingers. And then work these leaves, put some stitches into them. Like it's a great panel. So I've decided I'm going to lose the little twig. And I'll find a twig to stitch in there, I think. We'll go realistic. There'll be something out in the garden that I can utilise. I'm running out of thread. Let's knot that off. And we'll bury that knot in the layers. I would definitely put some little stitches around the perimeter of the wreath if you decided that that was what you were going to do. The reindeer too, where is he? Because his legs are so skinny. I definitely stitch right around, right around him. I think um, just to, yeah, stabilize him a little. Okay, here we go again. I think that's all the designs, isn't it? There were the three angels, the reindeer, the wreath, and the little dove. Susanna will be watching this thinking, I knew that dove would get her. Okay. It'll be a nice panel to have anyway because um, I can go back to it and pull another image out and add to the collection. I didn't end up using the, um, the wings that Susanna sent. But I will. I will one day. The bove, the dove, the bove. The dove got me sidetracked, Susanna. <laughs> She'll totally understand because that's what happens. You, you go into your craft room and you sit down thinking you're doing one thing and suddenly you start ferreting through your bits and bobs and you're doing something else. But that's okay. That's all part of it, isn't it? Let's put these little pins back. That feels really secure now. It won't take me long and I'll have this secured. Then we'll cut it out. I'll try and speed myself up here a little bit. But it's only half an hour. What else have you got to do? To sit and stitch. Nice to have a little Christmas project. You know, the other thing I found in my stash, and it's sitting on the desk here. Um, I don't know if I'll get time to do it, but I'm packing up, you know, my craft room. Hang on, let me grab it. 
I'm packing up my craft room and this fell out of the cupboard. So it's a little kit I bought, Molly and Mama, beaded baubles. And there's a dove in there, a little dove ornament. It's got everything you need in the little kit. I bought it at a Brisbane craft fair some time ago. Just gorgeous. So that's a possible project as well that really could be done and finished and, you know. And then at the fair, I couldn't help myself. I bought some extra of the fabric. So that's rolling around on my desk as well. I don't know if I'll get time for all this business, I tell you. Got so many projects going. That's all good. Little bit by little bit, as they say. Keep stitching. Little bit by little bit. It's amazing what you find when you're emptying out your cupboards. I was like, oh, look at that. And it's Christmas. That could be done. I'll have to do a little bit of research and see if that kit is still around. It was a few years ago. Is there a date on the back of it? I got it from my felt lady. I know she's still around in business. 2019. So it might not be, but um, the Roxy girls are doing a similar three-dimensional Christmas decoration idea so it's sort of along the, the same same line so you're probably all busy stitching anyway something similar but you know would be good to get it done and out of my hair but I don't know maybe another year who knows if a, a random video pops up and I'm doing felt felt decorations You'll know the girl couldn't help herself. Okay, really getting close to getting this all stitched down. Just going to go around that bottom. Then I'll cut it out. Stay within the lines, girl. You're creeping out into the green. I do. I will leave a little bit of green showing. Okay, now we're coming up the side. All the pins are gone. Be interested to see if doing this step first is a better idea than what I did over here where I just cut in. I don't think it'd be too much difference. This is really just stabilising it before I go and cut. You see, there's such little fine areas in this print. I think we started at the tip of that back wing, didn't we? Did we? Yep. So we're there. So now, once I end this off, I'm heading out today to drop off some stuff to the op shop. I'm going through my cupboards packing and my kitchen is just full of oh, glassware from generations gone by. And it's nothing I really want to keep. Like I've kept it for like four years and I haven't used any of it. We're not talking 
full-on glass like milk glass or depression glass or ruby glass or pink depression glass those bits and pieces I've kept I'm talking about um, the 70s and um, punch glasses and dessert bowls or you know things like that and I just I just haven't used them so make a decision are we going in the green or we're going to go right on the boundary um, we're going to go really close to the boundary not too much green because I'm thinking that when I do the overcast stitch actually I could do the overcast stitch in the green twig is gone another decision made yeah that's holding really well I'll just stay out of there for a moment these big Stinking scissors. So yeah, I've filled up three or four boxes of just glass. And you know the wine glasses. Like I'm not a big wine drinker, but all my wine glasses, you're going to think I am after I tell you this, I'm missing one. So they just break. They're just, and it's not because I was drinking wine before any of you just have a giggle and go, oh yeah, yeah, here she goes. No, not at all. It's just, you know, they... You're washing them up and the bloomin' hand not the handle, what's the the stem, the 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 oh, I don't know, what's the word for it? The bottom of the wine glass just snaps off. There's a lot there that have been given to us over the years and I just never ever use them. And there is literally cupboards of them, so I've packed them all in a box. They're going to the op shop. They're gone. I've moved house quite a lot over our married life and I'm seriously sick of packing them up. Look at you, little baby bird. So last night I packed up these boxes and they're in the back of my car. And as soon as I finish this video, I'm going to drive to the op shop and drop them off. I'm not going to go into the drop shop. Oh, goodness. I'm not going to go into the op shop. I'm just going to go to the back door because I do not need any more stuff. I'm trying to move house and then the last thing I need is more stuff. <laughs> I'm not in the mood anyway for op shops. I'm going to be in the mood and I like to make a day of it. And I focus on certain things that I'm looking for, if it's fabrics or lace or, you know. And I don't need anything at the moment. So to be just buying it for a one-day project, which is dangerous, just fills your cupboards up with one-day things. Okay. There we go. Yeah, that, that green's fine. So I've come as close as I can and it's all stitched. So it's really secure. I don't think I'll... Will I chop into there? I don't think so. I think it's going to give the head just that little bit of stability. And you're not noticing that that's, that's there. I'll then go through my embroidery cottons and start embellishing the wings. And I'll probably put a little ribbon on her and then find a twig that can come through and be stitched on the back yeah I love her all right we've got a plan of attack I'll need to find some green cotton or do I do it in cream let's just have a little look I'm a bit of a fan of seeing where I've been with my stitches. It sort of adds to the depth of the piece. If you don't want to see your stitches, well, let's have a little play. 
I'd have to go hunting for a green. Mind you, it's very well secured already, but I think I want, uh, I'm still thinking. Still thinking. I do like the cream. It is blending quite well. Yeah. I will use the cream. I'm often racing. I could use the green, but I don't want to highlight the edge any more than it is. And the other thing is, I might decide to stitch some beads or some braid or oh, who knows when we get to the embellishing stage at the moment we're just getting our bases stitched together and secure and then we can go for it there might be a decorative stitch that I can put around there I don't know we could even do bullion stitches gosh you could really go for it going to get a fairy look about it anyway because of all those layers but the, I'm okay with that it really feels quite strong and secure too now which is really good well we have a plan guys so thanks again Susanna for your very generous gift It's given me a lovely little Christmas project. I hadn't really settled on anything. So it's nice to have some Christmas stitchery to do. concentrating trying very hard actually not to put the needle through my fingers oh, that's coming along nicely lovely and that little fluffy bit that's there I'm just going to just trim that back a little bit it's just frayed a little there we go beautiful Still got a little bit of time. I'll keep stitching at least to the end of this thread and then I might leave you alone. This will be my homework to get the perimeter of these two pieces secure and then when I get back I'll dig out some bits and pieces to do a bit of embellishing, put a little sparkle on our girl and our little dove I'll try and find a little twig too in my travels. Go for a walk. I'm sure Bandit will assist. He's got lots of twigs. Actually, um, oh no, I was thinking about some foliage that I've got, but I've packed it up. It's gone to the other house, so it's like a mint colored spray and it has little berries on it i might cut a little piece off of that if it turns up in one of the boxes between now and finishing this video that would make a really sturdy twig because you know if i pick something up out of the garden if bandit shows me some suggestions 
they potentially be really brittle. So I might be forever replacing that little twig, which is not a bad thing. Because, you know, at the end of Christmas, everything just gets pushed into a big box and pushed under the bed. So that twig has sort of popped into my mind as being a potential. And it's got like a frosted finish on it. So yeah, it's a mint green. I believe it's a plastic. And then they've frosted it. We sold them years ago in our shops as twigs that you could insert into wreaths and garlands and Christmas trees. And I've got one of them. And then I think there's a second one that's got white berries and pine cones on it. There's, there was two sitting on my desk to the side of me just as decoration. I think they got forgotten when going back into the Christmas tree box. So they just found a home on the desk beside me. I might um, see where they've got to. Look, I'm going again. We've still got nine minutes. Might as well keep going. You know what I might do is I'm going to do a similar thing to the girl because I really like how stable that feels. So I'm just going to pick up my needle and thread, scoot over to our lovely little angel and spend the last few minutes whipping around her perimeter because I'm really happy with the way that that's seated. Then I can get rid of those pins. I know it's probably excess to requirements, but it's making things really stable. Yeah, so let's do that. And in the process, I'm like pulling the fabric over so that all of them are lined up. So when I come to stitch that overcast stitch around that perimeter, it'll be quite, quite simple because I've already anchored everything. So I think that's quite a good tip, guys if you are cutting out a, an image to do embroidery onto and you're using it as a bit of a 3D piece. It's like good old invisible stitch. Or tacking. The new name is invisible stitch. Tacking, you'd have that big stitch on the surface or invisible stitch, you've got a tiny little stitch on the surface. Yeah. That's really good. Especially when you get to these pointy little bits here. They're wiggling around a little bit. Might even be able to find some gold thread that might be better than that yellow. We'll see. Oh, come on. Get all those layers lined up properly, girl. I take that pin out. I think it's forcing things. It's better.
Okay, my thread's getting small and it's going to be falling out. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, good, good, good. See, that Sue Spargo thread's quite thick and it's sort of pushing things around as well. So to have my piece safely secured already, so I can get rid of that pin because that's putting pressure on it. I can do then a light little trim to really make that edge look nice and neat. So when I come through with the decorative stitches, all is secure. Yeah. Just rolling it with my finger a little bit. Yeah, heaps, heaps, heaps better. I'm glad I was able to maintain those little leaves, uh, the little wings too. That was another thing that I was tossing around. How do I showcase those beautiful wings? I just felt that my wire wings might be a little bit plain once I chop into her a little bit. All right. Let's get some more thread. How are we going for time? Oh, we got a few more minutes, guys. I should probably get moving because, like I said, I did want to head out for the morning. That's all good. Before the heat of the day sets in. Oh my goodness, it's been warm lately. Take that pin out, that pin out. Just let it relax a little bit. So I go back in. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So I'm not sure when the next video of this will pop up. Whether I do it the next consecutive day or if there's something else already scheduled. I'll have to have a little look. So, like usual, you never know what you're going to get. The girl flips around. Got to keep it interesting for you, don't we? Bit of this, bit of that. Oops, I'm going to take that pin out and let that fabric relax. Well, when I sat down, I was doing one angel. Now I'm doing an angel and a dove. Goodness sakes. It's always the way, isn't it? Okay. That's it. This will help support through the, the design too, that if I start embellishing, so for example, I start stitching into those little ferns there, I probably won't, but I might. Who knows? Um, this will help to stabilize the fabric a little bit more internally instead of just relying on the edge because at the end of the day yeah the edge is holding it all together but the more stable you can make your piece the better you just get a better result and you don't get that puckered puckered look if i did stitch those ferns it would have to be the smallest of threads everything's quite fine on this to be honest Let's see how we go. Scooting down the main straight now. And we're just about to hit the hour, so good timing. 
All right, I will toddle off and go and start my day. And when I get back this afternoon, I will sit down and do the perimeter stitching on the two pieces. As in, get the piece secured all the way around. I'm pretty sure I'll change my thread colours a little bit uh, on the angel. Not, not the little bird. She's a different sort of design again. Look at that. I've got the tiniest little bit of thread left. Goodness sakes. Now I'm going to have to try and do a tricky little knot. Oh, for goodness sakes. Let's just... This is what happens when you've got hardly any thread left and you're being miserly. There we go. Got it. Nice and secure. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. And thanks, Susanna, again, for this gorgeous, gorgeous little project. I can get rid of that pin now. And get rid of those pins so there's nothing dangerous now i can just do some decorative stitching around her and um, have a play with these threads i'm sure there's others around that i can use as well but we'll see and then i'll have a look out for some embellishing bits and bobs there's her wings she's got a halo oh i love her she's not even in camera shot there she is all right guys have a lovely day and I will see you in the next video and I promise I will stay at the back door of the op shop and not actually go into the op shop. It's just a, a drop and run, <laughs> a drop and run. All right, guys, look after yourselves and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.